Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. This is the second video in the DSP Lecture series and in this lecture we will study about sequences. Specifically, representation of sequences, finite length and infinite length sequences and finally left sided and right sided sequences. So let's get started. In the last video we learned that discrete signals are obtained by sampling of analog signals at discrete units of time. So if the signals are sampled at intervals of t, then at t we have let's say 1 unit, at 2t we have let's say 1.5 unit, at 3t we have let's say 2 units and so on and at 0t we have 0. Then we can represent this discrete signal as x of 0 t equal to 0, x of 1 t equal to 1, x of 2 t equal to 1.5, x of 3 t equal to 2, etc. to x of n t equal to some value k where n is an integer. Also here we can define the sampling frequency fs equal to 1 by t and sampling frequency is also called sampling rate and as stated before t is called the sampling interval interval or sampling period. Now this t present here with n possess a problem. What if the time period of sampling is not an integer? Say the value of t is 0.3. Then this sequence will look like x of 0 equal to 0, x of 0.3 equal to 1, x of 0.6 equal to 1.5, x of 0.9 equal to 2 etc to x of 0.3 n equal to k. But this doesn't look very attractive. Also we lost the counting ability like this is the 0th sample, this is the first sample, this is the second sample etc. So to have convenient integer values at the moment of sampling, we will normalize the value of t by setting its value equal to 1. Then we have x of 0 equal to 0, x of 1 equal to 1, x of 2 equal to 1.5, x of 3 equal to 2, etc. to x of n equal to k. This way the quantity x of n denotes the nth sample of the sequence. Now this way of representing a sequence that is writing x of 0 then the value of x of 0, x of 1 then the value of x of 1 etc is cumbersome. There is another simple way of representation. This same sequence can be represented as sequence of x of n that is x of n within curly brackets equal to within curly brackets 0, 1, 1.5, 2 etc to k. We also provide an arrow mark at the position corresponding to n equal to 0, like this. This is the complete representation of the sequence of x of n for the given discrete signal. To solidify this concept, let's do two examples. We are given with two discrete signals and we have to represent them as sequences. Also, I am assuming that each of these division on y axis corresponds to one unit. So let us first represent this signal as a sequence. So we have x of n equal to this corresponds to minus 2. So we have minus 2 this corresponds to plus 2. So 2 this corresponds to 1. So 1 and likewise we have 2. 3 minus 1 
1 1 then here we have 0 so 0 2 1 minus 2 3 1 1 minus 1 and minus 3 and let us put the arrow mark to show the position of x of 0 so this is the complete sequence for this discrete signal okay now let us do the same for this discrete signal here we have ex2 of n equal to 1 2 3 2 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 2 1 and as you can see x of 0 corresponds to minus 3 so let's put an arrow mark here now let's see the length of a sequence length of a sequence is simply the total number of samples in the sequence and based on this sequences can be finite length or infinite length sequences for example consider this sequence here this sample corresponds to n equal to 0 this n equal to 1 and this is n equal to 2 here n equal to minus 1 n equal to minus 2 and n equal to minus 3 so the length of sequence is length of sequence x of n is equal to 2 minus minus 3 minus 3 plus 1 this plus 1 is to account for the sample at n equal to 0 and this expression is equal to 6 so the length of this sequence is 6 and this is a finite length sequence if we generalize this concept for any finite length sequence where n ranges from n1 to n2 and minus infinity less than n1 and n2 less than infinity then the length of the finite sequence is obtained as n equal to n2 minus n1 plus 1 now if n1 tends to minus infinity or n2 tends to plus infinity then the number of samples in the sequence will be infinite and thus the sequence will become infinite length sequence so this is the condition for infinite length sequence now consider a sequence that exists from n equal to n1 and goes all the way to the right to any value but on the left of n equal to n1 all the samples are zero this n1 can be any finite integer that is n1 can be minus 5 0 10 100 or any other finite integer then this kind of sequence is called a right sided sequence on the other hand if the signal exists only on the left of n1 and is zero on the right side then this kind of sequence is called left sided sequence we also have two sided sequences in this case the sequence is defined for all the values of n in the range minus infinity to plus infinity these three definitions that is right sided sequence left sided sequence and two sided sequences are purely theoretical and does not have any practical implication but it can come as a one mark question for your university exams so just keep it in the back of your head okay i hope all the concepts that were taught in this video are clear to all of you if anyone has any doubts please feel free to ask them in the comments either we or some other viewer will surely help you if you found this lecture useful please like the video and also support us by subscribing to the channel in the next video we will learn about operations on sequences thank you for watching properly and have a great day